Okay, what we're going to be doing here is taking graphs of S versus T. We'll be given a graph of S versus T, and our first one looks like this. It's a, a parabola. And from that, we're going to be making a graph of V versus T. Think of this first graph as the position where an object is. So this graph shows us where it is at any given moment. So at this time, the object is at this position. And in the real world, there would be numbers on, on these, uh, these little points I've marked. Some people use X for position, X versus T, and, and I, I do a lot. Um, S is very commonly used for position. That comes from the Latin word for spatium. And then down here, we'll be making a graph of the velocity and we've said that velocity is the derivative of position. So what we're going to be doing down here is making a graph based on the slope of this graph. So we want the value of our V graph at any moment in time to be the, the slope of the position graph at that moment in time. So in other words, here at these low values for T, the slope is really small. And in fact, it's zero right there. Parabola gets flat right there. And then as time goes on, the slope gets steeper and steeper. So that means the V graph has to start off at zero. The slope right here is zero. So the value of my V graph is going to be zero. And then the slope gradually gets steeper and steeper. And so my V graph is going to gradually get higher and higher. And it turns out that if this is an x squared graph, a parabola, then this will be something like a y equals x or some constant times x. Uh, this will be a straight line. These will always differ in degree by 1. So this is a degree 2 function. This is a degree 1 function. Now, if there were numbers on, on, this, on these graphs, if you were to actually go to a particular point here, and calculate the slope right at that point. How steep is the graph? Give me a number for the slope. At that same moment in time on this graph, the number that you had for the slope up there would be the value of the V graph right there. And at any given point, the, the, the slope of the S graph is equal to the value of the V graph at that corresponding point in time. Okay, let's look at another example. Suppose we have an S versus T graph that looks something like this. It starts, starts off here and it's curving. Let me try that again. Curving and it gets to a point where it's perfectly flat. And we'll just mark this time right here where it finally gets flat. We draw these graphs one above the other so that a particular time on one graph is easy to, to correlate with the same time on the other graph. Okay, now what's going on with this original S versus T graph, the one up top? Okay, think about, think about the slope of the S versus T graph. And we want to draw our V graph, our velocity graph, such that the value of the V graph is equal to the slope of the S graph at any moment. Well, let's start with the parts that's easy, the part, the part that's easy. Right here, the graph is flat. So all along that section, the slope of the S graph is zero. So the derivative, the velocity graph, will have to have a value of zero. So during this time interval down here, the, the value of the velocity graph is zero. Now what's going on in this uh, this region? Well, the slope here at the beginning is pretty steep. That's a large value for the slope. So that's going to be a large value for the V graph. The V graph is going to start up kind of high. Then as time goes on, the slope gets less and less steep and eventually reaches zero. So that means as time goes on, the value of the V graph is going to have to come down, 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 and eventually hit zero. So I'll draw that. I'll draw my velocity graph starting at a pretty high value and then going down. And again, if this if this section of this curve here were, were a parabola or parabolic, then this section of the curve would be straight. And in the real world, you never really have perfectly sharp corners, so I'm going to round that off a little bit down at the bottom. Okay, so this is a graph, and that's its derivative. And again, if we had actual numbers on here, 
you could take any point, like right here, say, say this moment in time. At that point, my S graph has a certain steepness. At that moment, the V graph would have that value. So if the, if the slope right here were 3, if the slope of that little red segment right there were numerically equal to 3, then my V graph at that moment in time would have a value of 3. And it's, it's, it can be a little bit tricky. Some people are a little confused on this. It's a different way of thinking about graphs. Some people ask me questions like they'll say, right here, in, in this initial region here, the S graph is going up. Why is the V graph going down? Remember, where the S graph is going isn't the important thing. It's where the slope of the S graph is going. And the slope is starting off high and going down. The slope is getting less and less. And so the V graph has to be getting less and less. So we have a graph and its derivative. And the derivative is a graph of the slope of the original graph. Okay, let's do another one. In this case, we have a parabola. Looks something like, like this. And we want to graph the derivative of this. So we're going to make a graph down here that has as its value at any point the slope of the original graph. Well, let's uh, let's mark off this this time right here when it's right at the bottom. That moment is obviously a critical point on this graph, and it's easy to see right at the vertex of the parabola. The slope is zero, so I know the velocity graph has to have a value of zero right there. And then think what's happening on either side of it. Well, let's go on the right side first. As we go to the right from that point, what's happening to the slope of this graph? Not what's happening to this graph, but what's happening to the slope of that graph? Well, the slope is getting positive and getting bigger. So I'm going to draw my V graph as getting positive and getting bigger. And to the left over here, let's imagine as we go to the right, starting here, what's happening to the slope of this well, the slope starts off a very large negative value, so a, a very negative value. It's a steep graph in the negative direction. And as we go on, it gets less and less steep in the negative direction, all the way until we get to this point right here, where the, the value of the slope is zero. So I start off with a very negative value on my velocity graph, and it gradually gets less and less negative, and eventually becomes zero. So there's a graph and its derivative. Okay, our next one looks like this. Here's a graph of s versus t, position versus time, and we need to make a graph of the derivative of the position, which is the velocity. Well, this is in five sections. This first section where it's flat, the second section where it's curving down, and then the third section where it's straight at an angle like that, and then where it's curving back this way, and then where it's flat again at the end. So let's do the easy ones first. Here and here, in those two regions, the slope is clearly zero. So I'll just graph zero for those two regions. And then right here in the center region, this is a straight line section, the slope here is negative. And it's basically, if that's straight, it's a, it's a constant negative value. So during this time interval, down here on my V graph, during that time interval, I need to graph a constant negative value. Here's a constant negative slope, so the V graph will have a constant negative value. And then during this region, the slope is changing. The slope is changing from zero to some negative value. And as time goes on, the slope gets goes from zero down to some negative value. So let's draw this graph going from zero down to that negative value right there. And then in this region here, at the beginning right there, the slope is negative. And at the end of that little, this little time interval, at the end of that interval, the slope is zero. And in between, the slope is changing from negative to zero. So it's changing from this negative value up to zero, something like that. So, and again, I don't make these with sharp corners because in the real world, these changes are never completely abrupt.
But there, that's a, a rough sketch of a, we're given a position graph, and that's an approximate sketch of its derivative.